out the PowerPoint, but we'll try to make it interesting, but I sometimes say something like this. If anybody thinks that I get boring and I'm a boring um, visiting uh, missionary, just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Well, if you're raising your hand to say hallelujah, you know, well, that's different. But if you think I'm bored, raise your hand and I'll talk louder and faster, okay? So that you'll, you'll know that I'm anointed. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, here we go. And we, anybody can tell me where this scripture is found? Um, just shout it out. And we know that all things, thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. My younger sister, no doubt. Amen. We know, how old are you? you can we tell you your age? Are you older than me? Are you older than me? <laughs> well, I may be older than I look, you know. I'm 74. You got me beat? Yes, I'll be down in June. Oh, no. <laughs> I just got beat. <laughs> We need you in Romania. Yes. Okay. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. I have seven short points about this. Number one, we know. It's not that we hope or we guess, maybe yes, no. This is something, it's, it's a, a surety. I, I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded, I am convinced, I know this to be true. It's not maybe yes, it's not maybe no. And we know this. Point number two, that God, not the mental health professional, thank God for them, not the psychiatrist, not the shrink, not the doctor, not the government, none of those, they can't even touch what God can do in a moment. Amen. They are powerless. They do their best. And thank God for their best. But their best at its extreme cannot even begin to touch what God can do in a moment, in an encounter, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, when the Spirit of God comes upon you and you're touched afresh, you're touched anew. The vision comes. The healing comes. Everything comes. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the gloom washes away. When Jesus comes, everything changes. And we know that God, King of kings, Lord of lords, he that dwelleth in the secret place of that most high, everything changes, shall abide under the shadow, the protection, the provision, the healing, the restoration. Everything that the human heart craves and needs is found in the shelter of the Most High. Abide under the shadow of whom? Oh, the Almighty God. There is no more Almightier than the Almighty God. He is the Supreme One. He that dwelleth, he that dwelleth in that place. know that God, He works all things together for good. Well, I'd like to announce, ladies and gentlemen, of the esteemed congregation of the actual church of God, that even if it's your own sin, even if it's your own failure, even if you're, you're in the soup that you're in today, when God says all things, he means all things. Yes. Even your failure, even your sin, even your rebellion, even your disappointment. 
the big sin, the small sin, every sin, the mistakes of life, what people have done to you, what you have done to other people, the whole thing falls under this category of all things. All of it. No exceptions. Oh, well, Pastor Roy, you don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what happened to me. You don't know what they did to me. Oh, cut it out. It's excuses. It's an arm's length of excuses. Cut it out. Our God is greater than what people have done. God never gave people the authority to ruin your life. God never gave people the authority to change his plan for your life. God didn't do If you let him, that's another thing. But God still works all things. And the next key word is together. I think I told you, but it bears repetition, that I happen to be the world's greatest and most modest. Crepe maker. Nobody makes crepes better than me, except of course my sister. But she got the recipe. <laughs> no, we and I got it from my mother, my Swedish mother. Okay, now here's what you got to do. Would anybody here for supper like a bowl of flour? <laughs> Not really. You know, you're such a winner, sister. You, you're such a winner, you know? I saw you go up on a flap and you go down there. You get up there and you do it anyway. You do it anyway. You may need that stuff, but you do it anyway. You move ahead. You're an inspiration. Thank God. And you know, I'm talking about you. This sermon, I'm talking about you. together and you whip it until you got batter. Then you got something together. God works all things together. You whip that up into a batter and what you do then is that you have a nice hot skillet. Oh yeah. Lord, where are you? Lord, I feel all upside down, turned around. My life is in upheaval. It's getting all mixed up and I don't know what's happening. And Lord, now I'm starting to feel the heat. The heat is coming. Lord, where are you? I'm praying. Lord, Lord God. Hello, hello. Yes, where are you? I'm, I'm here. You remember me? You forget me. I'm here, Lord. You need a nice hot skill. And you pour this all things together on that skillet and you Move the skillet around so the juice uh, you know, goes all around in the corner <coughs> of the skillet, you know? And then, then you wait until one side is dry. I feel dry, Lord. I don't feel your spirit, Lord. Oh, God. And then when you think it's done, you flip it over. You ever been there? You ever done that? I believe that God put this message on my heart. <laughs> During the break between the two services, I didn't I'm preaching the same ser ser sermon I did. The first, it was good, I think. But it, it, this is better because it's what God put in my heart. And I had it in my heart, and you know, my wife comes into uh, Pastor's office where I was hiding out, and my wife says, you know, I think you should preach about all things. I said, you're right. I can't. <laughs> Oh, I'm preaching to somebody that's here tonight. 
tonight than this morning, wherever we are. I'm here and I'm preaching to you. I'm not preaching for the people out there. They can't hear me, but you can hear me. And I'm God's representative here this morning. And I'm here to bring you a message from the throne of God and from the word of God. And that is that God works all things together. And here it comes. Here's a good son. He's working it together for good. I told you my life fell apart in 2001. I felt like a dish rag discarded in the corner. I felt I never will preach again. And I really didn't deserve to preach again. And I didn't want to. My emotions were devastated. I would struggle with depression. I told you that, didn't I? Yeah. No words could ever describe what it was like. But anyway, and you know, God worked it all together for good. And you see the pictures about Romania. I never dreamed that we would be there doing what we're doing today, not in the fondest dream of my imagination. But God did it. And we're not talking about Roy this morning. We're talking about the God who raises the dead and causes those things that be not as though they were. And that same God is here this morning. And he will do for you what he has done for thousands and thousands and thousands and untold millions of people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift you. He will lift you. He doesn't do it for everyone. But the next word is for those who love God. You see, it's a little exclusive. He doesn't do it for everybody. He does it for those who love God. Well, I was at the church in Kingdom Life a couple weeks ago. I was the preacher of the morning, and I sat there, and the musicians were gone, and they were having such a good time. And you know, I was sitting on the front row ready to preach. And then I realized that you know, my love is so imperfect. My love is so imperfect. But then it came to me, you know, David was a man after God's own heart, and he was a screw up. He was a screw up. But God looked at his heart, and then I got hope. I said, Lord, I want to love you. I want to love you. That's my heart. I have no other desire in the world. I don't want money or fame or I have no desire for any of that. You know, I just want to be in his presence to love him and to serve him in any way that he chooses. And so, so you folks, an indication that you love God is that you're here this morning. Unless somebody dragged you. <laughs> but you guess we who can love God perfectly? Well, we love him to the best of our ability. Amen. We love him. And the second part is how we're doing, Pastor Rick. Yes, yes, we do love him. Pastor Rick, do I love God? Yes, you do. Why? Because you're here. You're listening. The other one is that you're a call according to his purpose. I would like to announce I have a I, I have a wanted, not from the New York Times, but I have a wanted from the, the Book of Books. And that wanted says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renew, renew, renewing of your screwed up mind. <laughs> That's looking for money and fame and fortune and stuff. You need to get a renewed mind that that stuff will just rest and disappear. And when you get a transformed, renewed mind by the Spirit of God, you think differently, you believe differently, you serve differently, you live differently, you choose different friends. said to in, in Romania, I don't do that here in the United States because we're too smart. They say in Romania when a young lady, you know, is interested in the guy who isn't saved, hoping that after she marries him, he'll get saved. 
I give her a word of advice and I can only sing the word of advice. Are you ready? Time to say goodbye. <laughs> say goodbye. Why? The instruction book, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Goodbye. And here's God's employment, want ed, that men and women, it doesn't matter your education, it doesn't matter whether you're big or tall, it doesn't matter whether you're that way or this way, I don't want to say the words because I don't want to say fat and skinny, so, you know, it really doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it doesn't matter what has happened to you, it doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you've done, what matters is at this moment if you present your body a living sacrifice, give it to God, see what God can do with the greatest mess that you have made, that you could possibly make, and God could take a Moses, a murderer, and make him the leader of the children of Israel. God could take the apostle Paul, who was there with the stoning of Saint Stephen, and enjoying every moment of it. Throw another rock, hit him another, hit him again, beat him to death, was in the apostle Paul's heart, and God says, he's a chosen vessel unto me. Cut the excuses, dear saints of God. Cut the baloney. Get real. Let us not think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but to think soberly. I count. God is still alive. He still works all things together for good. I will give my life to him. I will surrender all to him without excuse.